Children of this is the third book in the Dune series, and one I was kind of hesitant to begin reading. Dune Messiah ended on what I would consider to be the perfect note for the Paul Atreides story, so getting into what I was told would be the conclusion of this character arc was... Frightening? I didn't really know what to expect or where you could take the character that would feel more cathartic than watching where the second book ended off. And foolishly, what I forgot to consider was where the story outside of Paul could go, and that's definitely where Children of Dune focuses. Before we get into that though, I do want to cover what I consider to be a very important insight into the Dune fandom, because on Twitter, I tweeted out Children of Dune with the options on a poll, Children of or Dune. Dune and butts one. So. I love democracy. Okay, but what is the story of Children of Dune? Is the conclusion of the Paul Atreides arc, I do agree with that assessment, but in a pulled out view, this story really allows the universe of Dune to finally break away from that iconic character and exist outside of that shadow. Maybe still operating within Paul's shadow, but it's such a big shadow now that Paul stepped back, it's given plenty of wiggle room for this world to expand. Spoiler warning for book two of Dune, which apparently we are getting a movie from Denis Villeneuve about. Where we left off with Paul was him wandering off into the desert, blind, presumably to die, and now his children are coming into the spotlight to carry on his... litany? Is that the word I'm looking for? Destiny. Dynasty. And looking back at my Dune Messiah review, one of the biggest complaints I had was that it felt so closely focused on Paul. No other character was even allowed to really have their own arc, have their own motivations outside of just orbiting the gravitational pull that was this obviously incredibly iconic character that Frank Herbert had planted. But springing off from where these power players have been left with their factions and desires, the third book with Paul now taking a substantial backseat allows this to feel like the fully influential Dune I knew was under the surface the entire time. If I had to guess, with many of the fantasy authors that actually could quote Dune as being their biggest influence, many of them, if I had to guess, would actually cite the third book as being more influential than the first. I say this because compared to the first book, the third book of Dune has a much more developed, matured realization of how these political dynamics are going to strike at each other. Well, they're already fine in the first Dune book. They didn't blow me away. Now within the third, it feels up to par with the best of the best we even get today. And especially with Martin's also influential work, it almost has direct one-to-one -one handlings of how events and striking between these houses develops. It really reads like Game of Thronesy and fantasy to me, just coming before it and in science fiction. Because the third book of Dune is a faction power play. This feels like a game of Twilight Imperium in my mind. It is just strategy and strategy and plays for power. Frank Herbert's philosophy on power gains all the more depth with each book I consume by him. It is corrupting, but at the same time irresistible. It's the key reason why there's not really a good guy in the Dune universe. Everyone is just motivated, and there's these religious galactic backdrops that certainly do prop up certain figureheads, but there's no inane right or wrong to them. All we know is that the existence of Paul and presumably his line has caused catastrophe. And one of my favorite continuations of this theme that paints over the page is how Frank Herbert makes everyone operate so cold. From House Harkonnen to Atreides, there's not a lot of passion coming off the page. And I believe that's a deliberate choice. Granted, there are much more sinister sides to this power play house. Similar to the Tigarians, the Lannisters, and the Starks, there is like a worse side of things. But the end result of all of this is you have reunions and meetings throughout this book that, handled by another author who wasn't so dedicated to the underlying ideologies of their work, would be filled with these really intense emotional explosions of people crying and, oh my god, you're alive, but what we're given instead just feels so sterile in a sense. But that's not a criticism. It's a very 
brave choice by Frank Herbert, I think works absolutely. But staying true to many actual historical time periods, now that Paul is away, the fracturing of the power he once held becomes devastatingly dangerous. And caught in the center of it is his children and remnants of his family trying to simultaneously make sure their, you know, lives can continue while trying to make the right calls. And this is where a narrative device is introduced called the Golden path. This is the one path that is seen for the future that can preserve humanity, and it depends on Leto II, Paul's son. And there is a lot that can be said about free will, whether or not this is some form of ultimate sacrifice. Uh, you can make video essay after video essay on the layers and pressure put on this young man who now must essentially take the future of a species on his shoulders and sacrifice anything and everything at all costs to achieve it. Because that's where Frank Herbert is really going, at least if I had to call where the next books are headed, uh, in terms of the realization of this theme. How much personal sacrifice can one person give for the greater good before they end up becoming the monsters they had to fight to get there? And of course, being the millennial I am, I'm also wondering this entire time in the back of my head, like, is saving humanity even really worth it at this point. Look, I can understand how readers who need a strong protagonist-antagonist relationship could really struggle to get invested in the Dune series at this point, because yes, there are the Harkonnens, there are some Atreides we're still close with, but it's never presented as a cut and dry, black and white, right and wrong. And if you look at human history, getting away from the filtered lens you get in public school systems, it's rare to find a time in history. I mean, obviously there's some clear examples, but where there's just one right side and one wrong. We often like to think of it that way because it's simpler, but once you get down to the individuals, the people, their motivations, the reasons they're doing what they're doing, things become grayer, and that's where Dune thrives. It results in a beauty that I can only compare to the cold vacuum of space. I can imagine dying among the stars in this emotionless black void, but through this medium of just no filter, you get to to see the true beauty of the galaxy and the universe around you. That's what reading Children of Dune really felt like to me. Frank Herbert is finally standing firmly where he wanted to as a storyteller, and the world has exploded into a realization that reminds me of book four and five of The Wheel of Time, where it went from being like, oh, this is another fantasy world, to, oh my god, it's the wheel of time and scope. Dune is now achieving a similar emotion within me as a reader. Narratively, I still think I would have preferred to just end with Dune Messiah, because it was almost entirely just the story of Paul for me. But now that I'm through it, and Children of Dune has very successfully interested me and invested me in the actual dynamics existing outside of Paul rather than just Paul himself, I want to continue on. I will never blame a reader, though, for just finishing Dune Messiah and going, that's it, that's all I need. I'm good there. But my recommendation is give Children of Dune a shot, especially to find out the mystery of what exactly happens to Paul and, of course, what is happening to House Atreides. Spoiler warning, it's a lot. It's not good. There is not a family in fantasy I can think of that puts up with more shit than the Atreides line. My God. I do want to have a quick spoiler section though. So if you have not finished Children of Dune and do not want to know one of the most important touchstone points of it, go ahead and leave now because I just want to talk about one choice Frank Herbert made that I think is actually why I want to read on. So three, two, one spoilers now. He kills Paul. Like Paul is still alive. He's become this preacher in the desert. He returns but as he's giving this address, he is assassinated. And I think that was the absolute right call. Because as long as even the idea of Paul living existed in Dune, there's, there's this inability for a reader, I believe, to really see the spotlight of what this story is about to go anywhere aside from this man. Directly and bluntly executing him allows us as an audience to move beyond just, okay, this is the story of Paul, at least it did for me, I don't mean to speak for everyone, and shift this spotlight, break it up onto all the other important players it needs to. The mystery of like, is it, is it not Paul was like, well, one, I had it spoiled for me, so I just wasn't really 
invested in that. Maybe for readers who don't have it spoiled for them, it'll be like very tantalizing. And I'm aware that death isn't exactly the most permanent thing in the Dune universe. So maybe Paul's gonna be brought back though, I doubt it. Even if he was, that death, while it was literal, also felt metaphorical from the author to me. To just reassure us, this is not just Paul's story. Dune is bigger than this one man who was a failed prophet. Overall, I am feeling a very solid eight out of 10. It's a bit cold. It's not the most beautifully written thing of all time as Frank Herbert isn't exactly, in my opinion, the most uh, eloquent writer. And there's still some character choices here and there that just make me go, you're smarter than that. But putting all of that aside, there's nothing cancerous here. It's a great story that continues on with full force. The brilliant world that Frank Herbert had made, and I'm here for it. But let me know what you think of Children of Dune in the comments down below. Like and subscribe if you have not already, and hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. Bye!